be bracing itself for? Well, I would say that there has been discussion, a uh, serious discussion among the scholars across the China. Uh, there has been discussion about uh, Biden's foreign policies, including its policies towards China. It seems that uh, many scholars believe that Biden's policies towards China will be consistent with some uh, uh, post uh, elements, post policies. As we call it Biden Euro, it will be uh, combined by uh, three parts. The fourth part will be the post-Obama uh, administration era, and the second part will be the post-Trump administration era, and the third part, maybe the smallest part, will be the Biden era itself. So com talking about Biden's policies towards China, it seems that human rights and Taiwan issues, some sensitive issues, will still bother the bilateral relationship. But as for the economic cooperation, it seems that there are uh, opportunities as well as challenges for the two countries. As for the challenges like the high tech or the intellectual property protection, some uh, tough issues will still uh, come up among the two uh, among the, uh, the topics of the two countries. And but as for the, the cooperation on specific issues like uh, the two sides will try to reach out to each other uh, concerning the products the exchange of uh, of the, uh, the the people and this this part it will be some uh, positive signal mm. uh, Einar, Biden has vowed to rebuild alliances could we see a new alliance a new united front to confront China as America uh, rebuilt alliances well, it, right now, it doesn't look very hopeful for uh, Biden. I mean, he was begging the Europeans not to sign that trade deal with China, and they went ahead deliberately. They could, you know, what's a few weeks in signing a trade deal? They were signaling very clearly that the U.S. is no longer considered a reliable partner. They realized that uh, 44,000 votes in three states, and Donald Trump could very well have been the president of the United States. So with that kind of, you know, things going back and this seesaw action, between uh, you know, policies in the U.S., uh, they've decided to go their own way. Now, will there be some uh, attempt to create this uh, coalition, uh, especially around human rights, uh, rule of law, intellectual property? Yes, but I don't know that it's going to be effective or have any teeth. Mm. But remember, I mean, he's not in, uh, Biden and the U.S. are not in any of the major trade deals that are mm. going on. Not the EU, not RCEP, and certainly not uh, TCP, uh, <laughs> uh, TPP, TPC. yeah, I know. yeah, that's it. I always get that. That's used. a mouthful. So you know, when you start looking at that, you know, it looks like the only place he can run to would be WHO. And but what happens when he goes to WHO? China. If mm -hmm. he wants to do climate change, where, where does he run into? China. Mm -hmm. If he wants to do peace keeping around the world, where does he run into? China. All right. So right now, his options are getting increasingly limited because anything he wants to do on an international level, including uh, nuclear proliferation, um, you know, there are still lots of things in the, uh, in the Middle East that need to be attended to. And right now, in this speech, what was notable about it was what was missing. There wasn't a big vision, and there certainly were a whole bunch of issues that were not mentioned at all. 